course, they've also been enjoying you in Game of Thrones again in season three, very much so as Pycelle. I mean, what was your reaction to such a dramatic season? The Red Wedding, for example. What did you think when you saw that? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, what did you think when you saw that? <laughs> I mean, I'm, God, it's so violent, isn't it? Well, I, I, I got it by audition, the part. Um, um, I had read for several parts. And in fact, I only got this one because an actor happened to be ill who was going to do it, Roy Dutrice, who is now much better. And he's, he's now back in the series in another part, which is wonderful. Um, and I play this old bloke of 104, <laughs> whose uh, situation is that he, he survived because he always backs the right horse. And um, if he doesn't, he makes sure he does next time. And uh, he is determined to he knows he's going to die. He should be dead already, but he knows he's going to die. And um, but he wants to die under his own terms and um, you know, sink into the ground in the natural way. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's still there. And that's why, despite the enmity and uh, p people laugh at him in, in the court, he's in fact quite valuable to the court. He, his his advice and his age is valuable. It's not a large part, as, uh, as your viewers will know. But it's jolly good to play, and I love doing it. I absolutely <laughs> love doing it, except the beard is so uncomfortable. Oh, oh God. <laughs> when we're filming out in Dubrovnik, in the heat, it's like having an ant's nest on your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you would never know that. <laughs> well, apart from get rid of the beard, Pycelle, what advice would you give him for season four going forward? How can he keep keep alive and keep his wits about him? Pycelle? Yeah, what advice? By doing what he's doing. Mm. I mean, it's... Um, uh, he's, in fact, living two lives. And uh, there's the one life which is in the court when he's all doddery, but still gives the advice. And there's the other life when he's acting like a young man with women and, uh, <laughs> and as fit as a flea and, and all that, but he deliberately covers that up in public. And at this point in the series, we're in series four now. Um, there are only two people who know. Uh, but he's two people, and uh, I hope that's going to be exploited. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he's not essential to the plot, Pycelle. He's like, he's not essential to the court, but he's useful, and um, that's why they keep him around. And so the part is useful as a sort of sounding board for, for the writers, um, but he's not essential, so they could get rid of me at any time. I don't think he's worth getting rid of. Do you know what I mean? It, it, he doesn't deserve a really dramatic death. Um, I, I mean, you're going to see some more. I mean, it, it, I mean, when you first read the script, I couldn't, I couldn't believe episode nine of the first series when Sean Bean gets his head cut off. And I read the script, I thought, Sean Bean's the Hamlet of the series. He's the great one we all love and, and, and associate with. And I went back to the beginning of the script thinking, I've missed something. I know I've, this is such a weird series. I've missed something. And I went through it in really detail, every single scene, even once he wasn't in. And I, no, gets his head chopped off. And that's what's brave about the series. He doesn't mind just, tunk. And, they, you know, people come and go, um, mostly go. Uh, and I'm not, of course, at liberty to reveal. Um, but those who've read the books will know. But uh, now we're starting to go slightly outside the books and um, the writers are taking more liberties. And I used to say there's, a, there's at least um, two maimings and one, um, what you can call lovemaking sequence in, in each episode, and, which that keeps people alive. It keeps people <laughs> interested to turn the box on. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned death, spectacular death, so we've had lots of spectacular death so far, but which ones really stand out for you? The death of the horse. It was absolutely horrifying, um, cutting that horse's head off. It, it was, that was wor it was worse somehow than Sean going. It was, it was so, so unfair. <laughs> you know, you could say Sean's character, people could blame him for doing all sorts of things. Not that he deserved to have his head cut off, but you know, but a horse, it's just a horse, good God. And they had a thing like in, in um, um, you know, that American film about the mafia, you know, the, the, he, the, the, the godfather, the head, the head in the bed. And that was lying around on the set, of course, for further use. And <laughs> that head, I, I, it, was, it was so violent. That is my, personally my, but however, there's one coming up which is going to make you laugh so much, um, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> 
keep us in suspense, definitely mm-hmm. we really like it. I mean, as we say, we've lost so many people on the show, haven't we? Great actors and great characters. If you could bring anybody back to life in Game of Thrones, Absolutely who none. would you say? No. Absolutely none. They're all dispensable. <laughs> We're like hu- the human animal is dispensable, and I think that's a wonderful observation on the show. It's it's ruthless, it's violent, it's sexy, all those things. But we are all dispensable, and they are proving that they can do without their Hamlet. They can do without their Horatio or their Benedict or their or the Coriolanus or whatever, because um, the things go on, and because it's so fantastically placed historically, and it is nowhere at all. Nowhere in history at all. That the, the history in, in, in Game of Thrones is thousands of years old then, and when, where is it? Where, when is it? Mm-hmm. And so they can use artifacts from all over the world to decorate their sets and, and, and in their clothes and all that. And everything looks worn and uh, a part of people's life. You can smell that series, and, uh, which is a mistake that some series, which won't be mentioned, um, make that you, they're so bright and and fantastic and, and, and polished and cut and cut out carefully and all that. Um, you don't feel people are actually living up there. In Game of Thrones, I believe the people, I really do believe the people, and it appeals to the basest instincts in all of us. Have you found um, shooting season four compared to the previous seasons that you've shot? Well, the same thing. You, you just don't know what's around the corner. Well, you do, because you've read your scripts. But um, <laughs> you come in to start an episode and you think, I can't believe what's going to happen. It, it, it is really going to happen, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's going to happen. And it g- gets to it. And you think, they can't film this. this. This is something that they're not going to be able to film. They do. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're all magicians. They're all magicians. So um, at the San Diego Comic Con this year, there was a very... It was a fantastic scene revealed that had been deleted, unfortunately, from the last season of Game of Thrones with you, uh, Pycelle, and Tywin Lannister, Charles Dance. Um, what did you enjoy about that scene? And, and did you feel a bit sad that it had been cut from the show? I felt very sad that it was cut from the show. Um, the fans can, of course, get it. Uh, um, however, it might not be cut. I, I talked to the directors about I was only out there last week, two weeks ago. I said, I'm really sorry that went, you know. And he said... Yes, uh, but it, quite often we put things in different positions and we might find a place for it elsewhere. I said, oh, I really hope you do because it, it, it confirmed the seed that we had laid earlier on about him um, being two things. And I enjoyed doing that scene because I was able to, to actually say what it was actually all about. I am determined to die in my own time. And uh, I know I'm, I'm going to croak any minute, but I want to croak and I don't want to be killed and uh, uh, to be and I think you saw which I certainly saw uh, a twinkle in Charlie Dance's eye of, um, <laughs> I'm entertained by by this this thing that this old bugger's doing and um, but we'll keep it to ourselves and I enjoyed doing it and was very sorry to hear that it had been cut. It was funny that Tywin was on to you though wasn't well, it the only one to, yes, to said, near come him. on do you think been getting away with this for years <laughs> Well, he, I have been getting away from it, for you, but he's extremely good at his job and he keeps his eyes open to his time. And, God, oh, Charles Dance is good at it, isn't he? It's a part of his life. He's, he's absolutely made to play that part. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And Roz didn't guess, did she, either? When you know, Because you've got that scene in season two where you know, you're together and then she leaves and she's getting all a bit uppity, yeah. you know, oh, I'm waiting for this old man to get up and everything. And, you're, and, you're, and she's, oh, I'll go myself. And then as soon as she's gone, you're up and at it, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you, you are a fan. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the most memorable day of shooting on Game of Thrones so far for you over the four series? It was the execution of, of, yeah. of Sean Bean, yeah. We were out in Malta and uh, it was horrible doing it. Um, although, you know, you, it's all done in little bits and pieces so you don't get the horror of the build-up. Mm. But it was all so unpleasant and, and you know, the little girl watching her, her father and, and from, oh, awful. And uh, that dreadful young man, that king, it's <laughs> 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 awful. <laughs> they, they've got T-shirts now, and I think, go with Joff, and uh, <laughs> watch it, Joff. And <laughs> uh, yes, and that awful change of mind that he does. So my wife, my 
all the women and think, oh, I should express mercy. Not, no, not at all. Clunk. Mm -hmm. What, what would you like to see? Water. I know. What would you like to see happen to him? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Something dastardly. Well, but, uh, all right. Uh, uh, I can say is that I'm like everybody else who ever watches that series. We really want him. We, we want him out of it. <laughs> we, that wonderful thing in the first series when she nearly pushes him over, the, over that wall and you'll go, ah! And, and, and ah! He doesn't, doesn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, absolutely. And the hound puts his hand on her, oh, yeah. her shoulder and it, oh, can't do it. <laughs> oh, no, that terrible moment we were all waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> but we also wanted it that. And that was only the first series of Marriage to Series 4. Exactly. He's still bloody there, that arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> he's so nasty character. He's an awful character. And yet everyone about Jack Gleason says what a lovely lad he is and what a lovely oh. young actor. Yes, and he's not an actor. He's, he's never, not going to be an actor. Mm. He's a most serious philosophy student and a charming boy. Charming boy. Uh, completely and utterly humble, completely and utterly unspoiled by all, all this. He just realised it's fantastic. He's got the money to go to university now, and uh, which is which is terrific. But that character, I mean, he he is a, he is he is truly evil because he revels in other people's discomfort and invents things mm. in order to make things uncomfortable. He'll be at a, a dinner table. You'll suddenly realise a little weakness in someone, and he'll put his finger into it and. and around in the wound mm. and and it, it's just it's a truly properly evil person and that horrible scene with them um, with Ross as well you know when when he when Varys sells um not Varys uh, Littlefinger sells Ros to um to Joffrey and he kills her with the <coughs> with the crossbow how about that That's terrible. how about that I know. and it's I mean, it, it, and there's nothing people can do because he's kin and he's got all the money, and he pays all the servants, and he pays all the, 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 the army and all that. And nobody can get at him. No one can get him. The only person who has any influence on him at all is his mother. Uh, and it's interesting that, because, I mean, sh she's a very nasty piece of work, but totally protective of him. And in, ever, in series four, you get an inkling of what that's all about, mm. of her, her protectionism of him. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see some more of you as well in Game well, of Thrones. Wait till next year. <laughs> Definitely. I know it's too long. It's always too long away. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to, fans of the show, seeing or finding out in season four? I can't tell you. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. I'm absolutely. It sounds very boring. I'm sworn to secrecy. I have my script, which says Julian Glover, printed right across it, mm -hmm. and it's my script, and it mustn't get out. Must not ever get out. I don't even tell my wife. No, and um, well, there was one sequence which I objected to, um, uh, which I did show my wife, and she said, "Oh, don't do that. You'll be on Facebook in five minutes." Um, but which we got over, where I was described in the script as having to, I was revealed stark naked except for my chain of office, being pleasured by a young woman and um, lying on a bed, and I, I thought, no, we can do this without that. Um, and um, you know, I'm 104, and, but, you know, okay, so you can still do it, but it's still, it's just, and it's not good for Julian, not good for <laughs> Julian. And so we, we did it in a different way, exactly the same situation applied, but we did it in a different way. And um, it's a scene when, when I get arrested and, um, by, by, um, by Tyrion and um, that brilliant actor. Oh, Peter Dinklage, Dinklage, Peter yeah. Dinklage, what a brilliant actor he is. He just, he just knows how to do it. <sighs> Listen to us all. There's a scene in the series four, I can tell you, where she just, out of pure malice, comes and mocks me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it, is, it was great fun to do, because that naughty girl, that naughty actress, she's so gorgeous, Lena. Uh, <laughs> her eyes were so <laughs> full of mockery <laughs> and amusement at her own success. And when she walked away from the scene, she was all, in fact, um, uh, Tyron says to her, you're in a good mood today. She said, no, well, simple pleasures. And then she's just <laughs> taking a complete piss out of Pysel. However, I'm all right.